I'm Jessica Peresta, host of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another great episode of My EdTech Life. Thank you so much for joining us on this wonderful Monday, or it may be well into Tuesday, depending on where it is that you're joining us from around the world. But wherever it is that you're joining us from, we just want to say thank you so much for all of your support. We appreciate all the likes, the shares, the follows. Thank you so much to our new YouTube subscribers. As you know, our mission is to get to 1,000 subscribers, and we're getting there slowly, but we're getting there. But regardless, thank you to all of those, uh, all of our listeners, all of our audience members that have jumped over to YouTube, given us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And obviously, all of you that follow us on social media, thank you as always for making my EdTech life what it is today. So again, I, it's Monday night. I am excited to be here behind the mic with you all today to bring you some amazing conversations and amazing guests. So tonight, I would love to introduce you to Ms. Angelica Harris, who is joining us this evening, who is the founder and CEO of Top Tutors for Us. Angelica, how are you doing this evening? evening. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And I'm really excited to hear more about your work, hear about your story. And that way our audience can know what your mission and your vision and your passion is. So that's what we do here at My EdTech Life. So I'm excited that we get to amplify your work this evening here And for all our audience members, I know that you guys are all in for a treat. So if you're joining us live uh, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, please, uh, you know, pop in your questions, give us your comments. We definitely love for you all to participate with us this evening. So let's go ahead and get started. So Angelica, for all our audience members that may be joining us this evening and may not be familiar with your work yet, Can you give us a little brief introduction and what your context within the education space is? Yeah, so I'm the founder and CEO of an ed tech startup called Top Tutors for Us. So we use cultural insights to help disadvantaged students break past educational barriers. And I founded this company because I did not have a tutor growing up who I could identify with. And it was extremely hard for me to find one on the market. So um, I founded it. um, So when I was a junior in high school, when it came time to take a very important test, which you all probably know of the ACT used for college admissions. um, I really struggled with the ACT. Actually, Um, I was a great student 4.0 GPA. But my ACT score was a 16. And so um, I went to those big brand test prep companies and no one there looked like me. Everyone already had super high scores. And I could not, you know, I just did not excel in their program and realized I had to take on the test prep journey um, myself. And so I did, and I created my own test prep program and was able to, in nine months, double my score to a 32. And so that opened up a ton of college um, opportunities, you know, to great universities, and then was offered over $1.5 million in college scholarships. So I didn't know the ACT was like that important, but it's really that important. <laughs> and um So yeah, I went on to a great university in the Midwest. And um, while I was in grad school, I founded Top Tutors for Us. So students who, you know, who look like me can have tutors who share their cultural backgrounds. Um, And I also then learned about the importance of cultural competency in education and that there's a huge lack of it in our tutoring system. Wow. 
that is amazing. And, you know, you've hit on so many things and we're definitely going to dive in into that. You know, obviously ACT score is very important. Now I know, and what, from what I hear is it's, it's optional for many students in many schools. However, like you said, you know, you don't know how important it is until you know it's important. And still, you know, there's many opportunities within that in, in performing well in the, the ACT and obviously opening up opportunities to scholarships and obviously to universities and so on. And then, of course, your story mentioning, you know, the, the representation aspect of it. You know, these are things that many times many of us may not think about in that sense, you know, obviously here where I live in this demographic area, it's predominantly Hispanic. So, uh, you know, it's, we, we can definitely see our students definitely see like, Hey, you know, there's that representation, but I want to ask you, Angelica, in your experience, like you mentioned, so you went to this program and it was just, I guess, not what you expected. There wasn't anybody that you, like you said, you know, that looks like me and, you know, be able to provide or those services and so on. So can you tell us just a little bit about what that is like, you know, seeking a service, but then, you know, just feeling like you're kind of left out because you don't see that representation there. Yeah. Um, it was extremely intimidating being in that environment. Um, so there were 25 other students. And so I thought, you know, there would be at least one or two people, or, you know, a few people that would, you know, come from, you know, look like me or um, also have low scores. But I realized that um, it was an elite test prep program. And this was one of the big brand ones. So um, well known um, nationwide. And the instructor also um, was um, in his mid 40s. And so that was a big disconnect. Um, he could not relate to my own experience. And he also started with a really high test score. Um, and so he was, so for students who already started with a test score, they were just trying to get an incremental, you know, two or three points, that program worked for them. But students like myself who were in the teens trying to get to the thirties, there was a huge disconnect and um, I then realized I needed more than just strategies, and that was what they were teaching. And my program incorporated um, academic skill building, which um, led to that big jump. Excellent. Well, let's talk about that. You know, like you said, you know, one thing that I love that you mentioned is you saw that there was a problem, and then you came up with a solution. So tell me a little bit about that and, and just kind of the thought process behind it and obviously how it grew into the work that you're doing now? Yeah, so I um, I thought with, you know, a 4.0 GPA that I would be prepared for, you know, the ACT. I mean, I thought I was going to, you know, easily knock it out the park. Um, but, you know, I was mistaken. And I also didn't know, so they were like, so not being in that circle um, where, some, where most students already receive test prep, um, some of them started getting test prep way back in middle school. And so I didn't have that information. And so that's what also where I knew that um, someone like myself coming from the deep South, there was not a community um, where people who came from my similar background would share that information. So um, yeah. And I realized that um, though I did have the really high GPA, there were still gaps in my education. Um, so foundational concepts that I thought I knew, but actually did not. And that's the, and those gaps I ended up filling through my own test prep program, um, and worked on throughout the entire nine months and, um, yeah, it led to success. And, um, I actually, I left this out, but I became a test prep tutor before I found it top tutors for us. And, um, yeah. Excellent. Now you mentioned, you know, gaps obviously in the education system and, or obviously as a student, as you're coming through, can you tell me a little bit about what your experience was like, you know, coming up maybe even if, or as far back as you can remember, where maybe you felt like, Hey, you know what, I'm, I'm not really getting what I should be getting because I, and I think that is important because as you continue to grow, you know, and, and myself being in a position where I kind of get to see the bigger picture, 
there are a lot of deficiencies still within our education system. And many times it's, although a student may not master a concept, they still get, you know, pushed along and it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So can you just, you know, give us a little uh, brief, int- or uh, excuse me, a brief, uh, you know, exp- or your experience coming up maybe through either middle school, through high school, or where you kind of started noticing like, hey, you know, just something just ain't quite right that led to that effect or affecting you in the ACT sense and obviously with the learning gaps that you mentioned. Yeah, I think that's a huge problem, actually, what you mentioned in our educational system is that um, well, we have we have a system where a C is a passing grade. And some students, they might get above that 70 percent, but there are a bunch of concepts that they didn't master, but yet they still get passed, you know, pushed along into the next grade level. And when, in fact, they really need to be mastering what they missed. And uh, that's something that I, you know, realized Later on, my, uh, when I got to 11th grade, I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot of things that I missed and did not master. So um, it's important for students to have those gaps identified. Um, and that's, I'll talk to you guys later a little bit about how top two is for us identifies those gaps. And um, it's also really important, um, yeah, to address those um, before moving along. And um, yeah, it was kind of unfortunate that I ended up in that situation, but it ended up sparking so much shame and now it can be a champion for, you know, other students like myself. Excellent. And, you know, and that's great that you share that story. And, you know, but as we all know, the reality of it is many times, you know, there are many students that can't recover or they don't recover Mm -hmm. from that and it's just to me it's such a disservice and you're absolutely right you know the c is a passing score and as long as you meet the minimum requirements and especially now with the just the state testing and how that goes and which is very interesting because it's a standardized test knowing that not every student learns in the same way but again they standardize it and one of the things too is some of those tests have maybe about, you know, 42 questions, 46, depending on the grade level and so on. And sometimes you only need, you know, 15 questions or 20 questions and you are considered passing, but did you really master? And then you just continue to go. And and here in Texas, they have what they call like meets and masters and, uh, you know, approaches. And so everybody, for us, it's like, oh, you got to be at masters. You got to be at masters which in reality is maybe from 20 questions, you're going up to maybe like 27 or so out of the 40 some. So it's just very weird the way the, the, our scoring system goes. And then all of a sudden, depending on how the state does, it's, well, let's move, let's move the the goalpost just to kind of make our numbers work or look a certain way and so on. And, Honestly, I just feel that, and I've seen it in these last 17 years that I've been in education, how it does cause a lot of harm to our students because I've seen where we'll have ninth grade students that are taking algebra, but yet based on some of the uh, platforms that we use that are there to help them uh, close those gaps, they're still trying to master fourth grade skills, fifth grade skills. And so I, I completely understand your story and, and I see it and that, and, but like I said, I'm thankful for the work that you're doing and the opportunity that you've had to make that change and really help others that are in that situation. Because like I said, many times, a lot of students may not recover from that. So as you had your, as you had that experience, and like you said, you know, you you started your own program to really help uh, not only yourself, but also to help other students. You know, tell me a little bit about that experience and then how that led into uh, Top Tutors for us. Yeah. Oh, I also want to add real quickly to what you just said is um, like the ACT, this college admissions exam is really the only test where they standardize it. And so throughout, you know, we're working in the classrooms our quizzes are different throughout different schools. So it's like our whole our whole school systems are different. What we're receiving in the classroom is different from students, you know, from a different neighborhood. And then now, you know, senior year, trying to take the ACT, everyone's take, doing the same thing. So um, 
just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to add one thing to that. So uh, there's a gentleman that I work with who doesn't work in our district anymore. He moved districts, but very bright with, with data and he's a real big math guy. And uh, usually what he says and, and that I learned from him is really, you know, sometimes at least in our district, you'll have a north side and a south side. And usually he says, you know, the south side schools really I don't have to go help as much because they have the resources there. Not necessarily that the district provides the resources, but, you know, they have resources from parents that will say, hey, you know what, if my kiddo's not doing that well, I'll just send them over to this particular tutoring program or this particular tutoring program. So really his focus was on the north side where you have those students that do not have those resources. Parents don't have those resources. And so that's a lot of the things that he saw. And that's the way he said, hey, I, I know this doesn't seem quite right because I didn't understand. I said, you know, if the students aren't doing well or performing, why aren't we there trying to help them out? And that's when he explained to me kind of in a similar, maybe a little bit about what you're talking about is, mm -hmm. yeah, don't I, I don't worry too much because I've got that external support from the parents. It's the schools on this side that I really need to go in there and help teachers and do some pullouts and really work with students as well. And then really push more for parent uh, kind of parent support, or at least showing parents how to do how what's going on with the math and so on to kind of help them. So it's very interesting in the way that our system is set up in yeah. many ways. And so I know that that kind of, also adds to those components of where we have that disparity, even within the school district. And then, like you said, you mentioned, you have the same students taking the same exam, but, the, you know, they don't have the same experiences right. that, you know, even, even though you're in the same school district, it's still very different. Right. Exactly. It's, it, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like, as you just mentioned, and it's in it's in school districts all across the country. And um, just surprised we haven't fixed the problem yet. Why students from different backgrounds, different zip codes, aren't receiving the same you know level of education or rigor, and um, it affects them you know all throughout you know after high school. You know what college you end up going to, um, careers, um, and as you saw in my example with test scores, the amount of scholarship money you end up receiving and students from low income backgrounds, those scholarships are really important. Yeah. So I know I would not have been able to, um, receiving that allowed me to um, do undergrad and grad school back to back. Wow, that is wonderful. Well, and like, but like I said, that's great and that you're a success story, but also, like I said, the fact that now you're kind of giving back and you're really trying to take care of, you know, you, in other words, you don't want that story to kind of repeat, repeat right. itself anymore. And so that's where the idea of top tutors for us came about. So tell us a little bit more about how you kind of started getting that idea, the inception of it, and then into what it turned into now for you and the current work that you're doing. So, um, and right after, um, high school, um, so my dad told um, his friend about my ACT success and my, my dad's friend said, oh, I have a son who's in junior and he has a really low score and he needs to get above a 21 so he can receive state scholarships. And so I got his score up six points and I was like, wow, like that was really amazing. I mean, it's also a great feeling. I also got paid for doing it. <laughs> so, um, that um, tutoring just became... Um, a part-time job. So I was a uh, PSAT, SAT, and ACT tutor for six and a half years. And I helped students get really big jumps in their scores. Um, and it was more than about the money. It was just also just the, you know, the amazing feeling you get just from helping a student um, achieve their fullest potential. Um, and so right when I was in grad school, um, the semester before I graduated. Um, so I, I was always getting a lot of demand for my tutoring services. I actually partnered with a nonprofit organization in um, Los Angeles. And so they were also, they were sending me tons of students every semester and I get, became really, really busy. Um, 
And that summer before I graduated from grad school, I was in an entrepreneurship program. And the entire summer I was doing customer discovery. So I was asking my students about like uh, how they enjoyed my tutoring service and students that didn't go with me and what, what traditional test prep company, what was their experience like? And I started seeing a pattern, um, specifically black and brown students would mention that they experience, you know, things like microaggression uh, from their tutors or, you know, assumptions that they couldn't handle certain problems so the tutor wouldn't cover those. And I was really shocked because I also had that same experience. And the idea came to me, I'm like, well, I'm at this really great university. What if I recruit, you know, black and brown tutors from these top universities, train them with my test prep program and create a matching algorithm to, to match them with these high school students, you know, top this can, we can, I can make a really big difference from it. So um, anyway, did that, um, finished the customer discovery throughout the summer and that fall found the top tutors for us. Um, participated in a venture competition at my university and um, actually won it. And so that, you know, gave me a lot of momentum. Also, I pitched top tutors to um, the St. Louis Public Schools. So they loved it and actually signed on. And I was like, wow, like a school, like a major school district right in the middle of the country, like signed on to top tutors. That's really means, you know, we must be on to something with this concept. Um, and yeah, so far we have four school districts signed on. So that was like, wow, there was, there was, there's a really huge gap in the market and yeah. Absolutely. You know, and that's such an important need. And so, you know, you mentioned, you know, of course, you know, black and brown kids, you know, and, and even for myself, you know, growing up many years ago, it, you, you still, you know, to this day, there's a lot of things that I can think about that even growing up, I was like, wow, you know, I, I didn't know that that's what it was, you know, the little microaggressions or things of that sort, or just like you mentioned the assumption that just because I may look a certain way, it's like, ah, no, nah, this, this is, this is, this is pretty much where you're headed. This, these are your only options and so on, as opposed to somebody else or anybody else, you know? And so, I can't imagine, you know, that happening and it's still happening today. And I completely understand that. And that's why there's that success that you have, like you mentioned there, there, you are offering something that hasn't been there before that there is a huge need of, and you're filling that gap. So I want to ask you to, in your experience and, and the work that you're currently doing, uh, how impactful or, you know, or can you share just how great the impact of okay. culturally relevant tutoring can have in, you know, in any demographic, you know, or especially, you know, the, what you're focusing on, which are, you know, maybe black and brown kids, or is it just going to be, is it just black kids that you focus on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Currently we focus um, just on black students. Okay. However, not say in our program, we don't have brown students also, even mm -hmm. we do have, so um, we have students from lower income backgrounds. So we're really serving, I, um, disadvantaged students, um, or traditionally, you know, under-resourced students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> no, but yeah, I, so my, my question was, was too, like, how important is it, you know, or that you've seen in your experience too, when a student comes in and just lights up in the sense that I'm walking into a room and I see, I can see myself. You know, I see somebody that looks like me, somebody that has maybe a similar background and so on. How big of an impact is that? And how have you seen that, um, you know, that success of those students continue to grow within Top Tutors for us? Yeah. Um, so there's so much um, great data behind cultural competency that I end up now realizing and, that, you know, learning about. And so many school districts are trying to bring on more diverse teachers, but it's really hard. There, you know, you, you already probably know what there's a huge teacher shortage. And what most people don't talk about, there's a huge minority teacher shortage. Like black teachers make up less than 6% of the public school teacher, teacher workforce. 
but black students make over 20% of public school students. Um, and there's also data that shows when black students have one or more black teachers, their graduation rate increases by over 30%. So um, there's a ton of data and I can go on and on about the importance of students having teachers that identify with their backgrounds because when they can understand a, t a student then they really can reach that student. So we also make it really easy for schools to bring in diversity. And that's a, you know, a huge value prop. I mean, in addition to our ACT test prep program and um, when students come into top tutors, what's really great is that they get a, not a tutor who looks like them, but a tutor from a top university from, we like to say from Harvard to Howard. So many of these students, um, some of them are first generation. And so when they get to connect with a tutor from Harvard or MIT or Stanford that like come came from their similar background, it's like very inspiring. And we found that our top tutors are more than just the traditional tutor. They are motivators, they're coaches, they're friends. I mean, just all the above mentors. And um, it's, yeah, it's really great to see that relationship. And, um, you know, we've had tremendous success with our, our students that have gone through our test prep program. Um, our students are actually doing two times better than what's on the market. So um, our students are improving their composite score on average by 4.9 points. And so most test prep programs just move student scores about two to three points. So we're nearly doubling that, which is um, a great, um, you know, great asset. And, uh, you know, we just continue to, you know, to continue to really help our students. That's great. You know, and that, that's so exciting, especially like you mentioned, you know, you have your tutors coming in, like you said, from Harvard to Howard and all different backgrounds, you know, or different experiences, but the same goal, you know, making it to university, you know, great scholars. And now they're coming back, kind of giving back to the community. And, and you, like I said, that is so important because, you know, growing up myself, I didn't have that, you know, but I can see now the importance of that and just the motivator that that is, because like you mentioned, it, they not only become that tutor, but I love the way you said it, you know, they become that mentor, you know, they become that guide, they become more than just the tutor because there's that connection. And for the student, it's just so great to be able to say like, wow, somebody at this level, you know, that similar background, but made it here, whether it's Harvard or whether they're at Harvard, you know, they're making it and they're helping me and passing along that knowledge. And I think that mm -hmm. that is so important because it's something that maybe a lot of people may not think is a big deal, but myself, you know, in my experience, I see that as something so significant and planting a seed, a seed for success, you know, a seed that can change, you know, one's trajectory from what was, you know, I guess uh, deemed, you know, this is the road that you're going to go and, and that's, there's no way out of it, but no, it's just saying like, Hey, this is an opportunity to an open door that can lead you to just a different experience in a different world and that can pay off dividends in the end. And I'm absolutely uh, thrilled and in awe about the work that you're doing. So I want to ask a little bit about your tutors, like you mentioned, uh, how is it that you go about recruiting uh, your tutors for uh, top tutors for us? Yeah. So we have partnerships with universities, um, diversity centers. So those partnerships allow us to streamline tutors, from their colleges onto our platform. And I actually was a part of a diversity cent a diversity program um, at, in college where um, my university is actually, or my diversity program is actually a huge, um, where we recruit a lot of our, where a lot of our tutors actually come from. So um, we found that this is untapped talent and we actually hope to, uh, since we have so many great you know, college students that then train to be tutors that we realize, you know, our platform can be more than that, where we actually can be con connecting our tutors to, you know, job opportunities where many um, 
employers are looking for um, really smart, diverse talent. And we have that on our platform. So um, we hope to get there one day. And um, yeah, we're really excited about um, yeah the scale that we've gotten. And we're a virtual program. So that allows us to reach universities all across the country. That is great. So now I, I kind of, that kind of led up into my next question. So it was a nice segue. Like you mentioned, you know, the platform is virtual. Mm -hmm. So then obviously the students can go ahead and as long as they have access to the internet, they can log on. So can you tell us or kind of walk us through from the student side, the student mm -hmm. perspective, what it is that they do or what is it that they see once they, you know, get onto your platform and, and yeah. get that tutoring service? Yeah, so um, the first thing they'll do, they'll do is take an online assessment, which we measure their, um, we collect data on their um, behavioral and technical skills. And so we actually look at 30 different features, um, which allow us to then match them with the perfect top tutor. And so um, while I was in college, I didn't mention this, but I um, was a computer science major um, an undergrad, and then did a master's in computer science. So actually, part of my uh, master's program was developing a managing system for a tutoring program, and um, then further developed it after college. And so after students complete um, their online assessment and get matched with the top tutor, they um, have ac um, get a login access to our tutoring platform, um, which they will um, book sessions with their top tutor, also um, join their sessions, see you know, past sessions, upcoming sessions. Um, and our top tutor also assigns homework after each session. So it's a whole managing platform um, that they get access to. That is great. So I want you to uh, tell us if you can, just a, it, maybe some highlights or, you know, those victories or successes that you have seen, or maybe some feedback that you've gotten from previous uh, students that were using top tutors for us. Is there, are there maybe two that might stick out the most that you can share with us and maybe just let us know where those students are at now? Yeah. Um, a big one that was recent, um, this was actually through our partnership with the school. Um, so a student did, uh, it was just three weeks in our program. And um, he, he increased his ACT English score from an 11 to a 19. And that blew like, just me out of the park. I was like, wow, you know, it's incredible. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, English was his, you know, hardest subject, but like that, you know, that instilled confidence that, you know, he is a strong English student and if he, and also it, you know, gave more credibility to our program. Um, so that was a big one. Also, um, we worked with a school over the summer and um, we had a, you know, a student who all, who really enjoyed her working with her top tutor because she mentioned that uh, people like her typically get overlooked. And so that was, you know, really, you know, warming to you know, a really great feeling that the top tutor, she felt included and she felt most importantly seen um, by her instructor. And from there, she felt like the sky is the limit. Oh, that is so important. You know, and, and going back to like what I said, sometimes it's just the little things like that. Like you mentioned, how important it is to just be seen and to, you know, have somebody there that is giving you that attention and, and making sure that you're being successful and again, it just really just makes a huge impact. And again, also going from 11 to a 19, you know, in language arts or, or ELA, you know, from going from something that was at once very difficult. And now thanks mm -hmm. to your service too, as well, or, and the tutor, you know, taking the time to work with the student. And, and, and again, a, a lot of that, I think I, it has to deal with being matched up appropriately. Like you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. taking that test, you know, and then seeing a little bit of the background, seeing where you're coming from and then matching you perfectly with that tutor. I think that that is a great way and a great use of technology there to be able mm -hmm. to do that and land with the right person who's going to be, who's going to be very helpful and take you from that 11, that some, that one thing that seemed 
impossible or very difficult at one yeah. given uh, point in time to be something that now you're excelling at and doing very well and really just knocking it out of the park with those scores. And that is something that is amazing. So, I mean, it, I, I really love, you know, just what you're sharing. And I'm just so thankful that there are, you know, entrepreneurs like yourself or, or visionaries like yourself that see that there was an issue through your own experience and now you're finding a solution. And now, you know, there's a lot of great, uh, you know, rewards from that work that you're doing through the, you know, the student success, obviously, through the tutor success and, you know, many doors are opening up for yourself also as well because of the work that you're doing and being able to get into school districts. So that is fascinating. So I want to ask you, though, and, and kind of come in at that entrepreneurial side. And I know we kind of talked a little bit about, you know, we have a, a mutual, you know, a friend, Gavin, who's also been on the show here as well. So I want to ask you, though, what have been, you know, maybe some of those barriers that you have had and then how, you know, how have you overcome them to continue to grow top tutors for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our model is B2B, um, also like Gavin, um, which a COPPA. Uh, and so some um, challenges we face with working with school districts is that, I mean, it's a long sales process. Um, it's a bureaucracy. So communication can get lost um, and it can be months um, until we actually get implemented within a school district. So um, that's been a challenge um, managing those relationships with schools and um, constant pitching. And um, also we have to have some adjustment to make sure we are fitting their model within their school. Um, and also just that top tutors model is being maintained when being implemented there. So um, that's a challenge. And we've also faced techno technological challenges, such as, um, so we have two full-time developers on our team and um, uh, making sure that the features we do have implemented um, also will work for our target users. So there's a lot of like back and forth, having users try out our platform and then giving that feedback back to the developers. Um, so our goal was to push out an MVP. So um, there are a lot of big features we still have in mind, but we also have to make sure that, okay, at this stage, let's just get something out that's workable. And um, so, yeah, that's that's been a challenge. Um, you know, make sure we're, you know, we're useful for our target users, but not overly um, complicated for an MVP. There you go. No, and I agree with you on the first part that we're talking about as far as, you know, the finding the right person to speak to. And then sometimes that person may not be the right one, but however, they try and help and maneuver and things of that sort. And, but you're absolutely right. Many times it's just communication gets lost or maybe it's just not the right language in the sense of, uh, when I talk to a lot of, uh, uh, platforms, I always ask like, yeah, are you standards aligned? You know, cause there's certain things and keywords and phrases and things that as a district you're looking for. And obviously sometimes, like I said, although it may not kind of fit within a certain, you know, I guess way of doing things, there, there's gotta be ways around it. And sometimes you're absolutely right. There are so many people that are all along the line that have to be informed and talked to. So I completely understand where you're coming from with that. And and it is that something that's very difficult and especially to get finally down to the, the right person that needs to sign off on the yes, we're okay and continue with that. And uh, so now kind of as we kind of start wrapping up, I have like two final questions for you as far as the interview questions. And then we'll go into our last three questions that I always ask my guests. But I want to ask you as far as, um, you know, top tutors for us is, are, can you discuss maybe any major projects or initiatives that may, that you're excited about, maybe that you're releasing that you can share with us? Um, definitely our app. So we have some really cool features being implemented such as, um, automated homework, um, tracking students' progress um, after they take a full um, ACT or SAT. 
So seeing those areas and also chat, like look, having a visual of how they grew. Um, we have, um, we've added more features to our matching um, process, uh, matching students with our tutors. And we're also expanding more into B to C because we've realized that top tutors is not just for schools, that there are parents that want to um, send their kids to us. And so we're building out a platform for that um, to be you know, conducive. Perfect. And that kind of, again, segued great into my last question. And my last question to you is, what would your message be for parents uh, and students who might be considering top tutors for us? Yeah, if you guys are considering top tutors for us, that's great news. Um, so you should visit our website, www.toptutorsforus.com, and fill out our questionnaire form underneath for students. And um, we'll have a representative get in touch with you as soon as possible. Awesome. Great. Well, Angelica, thank you so much for sharing the great work that you're doing. I really appreciate you opening up and telling us your story, your experience, which led you to this great work that you're doing and that you continue to grow. And just everything that goes along behind this, I know is not easy at all, but the way that you've been able to do it and bring it out. And of course, like you, we mentioned, uh, you know, Gavin, also having people surrounding you that can give you that advice, can give you that help, can help you walk through, you know, certain things that you might not expect, but to help you overcome those barriers and so on. That is great. So big shout out to Gavin and Jacopa. Yeah. Just you want to give you a shout out to as well. And everybody else that has come alongside you along the way, guiding you because this is a great work and it's really exciting. And obviously the results are there, you know, going from 11 to 19, you know, other experiences where students are nearly doubling, you know, their scores and so on. And that is great. That is something that I love to hear. And I'm sure that everybody in the education community loves to hear that there's a great work being done. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you. And please make sure everybody that's listening and watching live or catching this on the replay, um, like Angelica said, we're putting the link here in our live uh, show, but it'll also be in the show notes. So visit toptutorsforus.com to get information, whether it's to bring it into your campus or your district, or if you are a parent or a guardian, whatever the situation is, and you have a student uh, at home, child that needs just additional support, please make sure that you reach out to top tutors for us so that way they can get that help and that can open up doors and just really change um, things for your students as well as getting them uh, ready for those tests. And like I said, just being very successful. So that's wonderful. So thank you. So Angelica, before we go and we wrap up, I always love to end the show with the last three questions. So we'll start off with question number one. So as we know, every superhero has a weakness or a weak point. So for example, Superman, his greatest weakness was kryptonite, which obviously so was a pain point for him, caused that weakness, caused that pain. So I want to ask you, in a similar way to Superman, what would you say would be your current edu kryptonite? Yeah, um, man, <laughs> I have a lot of them. I don't think I really express them on the podcast. <laughs> but um, I, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of, there's definitely a difference from working in education versus like working in finance or it's, or any other, those big sectors. Um, there's a lot of passion um, that I have for this project that I'm working on. And also um, we work with, you know, disadvantaged under-resourced communities. So um, it's definitely, you know, going to a really amazing college, I just see the disparity and it's, you know, it can really touch me at times. So I'm like, wow, you know, it's, and it gets me angry. I'm like, why can't everyone have equal opportunity to success? So, um, yeah, I sometimes just have to just remember, okay, all I can do is just lead top tutors to do great work. You know, I can't, you know, I can't save the whole world. Um, but just if we do great work and um, make a difference in the students that we work with, that's you know, all I can change. So, um, 
yeah, I guess just keep my feelings kind of just keeping in perspective. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. But again, you know, just even though you may feel like maybe you're not doing enough. It, it, it is a lot regardless, you know, and I always saw that uh, in the classroom, you know, for 11 years being in the classroom, one of the things that I always told myself is, I know I'm not going to see the immediacy or the immediate results right away, but it's just that seed that you're planting. Sometimes we get to plant it. Sometimes we get to water it. Sometimes we get to reap it. But in the end, we know that there is going to be some success and there is going to be fruit of that labor of love. So stay encouraged. And you are making a huge difference because I'm excited about it and I see it and you're telling me stories about it. So just keep doing what you're doing. All right. Question number two, if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's a good one. Um, I mean, I guess you probably would think I would say, oh, put top tutors on it. <laughs> um, I think it would just be something just motivational. Um, you just never know what people are going through. So I would have something like, you know, just, uh, keep working hard or just keep going after your dream. Something like that. Um, our slogan is empowering students to dream. So this could be in the, in the classroom. This could be, I don't know, on a you know sports team, or it could just be some a you know, personal goal. So um, it, it will probably be our slogan: empowering, empowering, probably not students, but empowering. Keep working at it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Empowering people to dream, or empower, but even empowering students to dream is something that's important. I think with so much that's going on and so many things on social media and a lot of negativity, obviously, you know, with uh, with student or student behaviors, and but then also the teacher side and so on. But you know, it's 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 okay. Like students, you know, keep dreaming, and and things can happen, and we just need to make sure we have some amazing people like we do at Top Tutors that can definitely help that dream come true. Like I said, just uh, in that in that sense. So, uh, yeah, I love it. Last question, Angelica. Here we go. Is if you had to author a book starting tomorrow, what would your book be about? Um, let's see. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's really weird. I would actually talk about, um, so I was actually a golfer growing up. Um, so I played golf. Uh, I started when I was four years old. Actually, uh, my parents introduced, introduced me this, introduced the sport to me at that time and, um, became a part of this golf organization designed for, kids um to learn life lessons through a game of golf um but i learned a lot on the golf course um just i met great people um was actually just playing golf with executives um actually former presidents and so like the golf course gained again a lot of connections from there and so my book would be about my time playing golf as a junior and as a collegiate so, um, and more in, in, outside the sport, but just the, just the conversations that I had, um, and some of the really cool connections that I made. So great. It'll be about four Yeah. I love that. That's great. Well, Angelica, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here this evening and just really sharing your story, sharing the work that you're doing. Like I said, I'm very happy and, and uh, you filled my bucket today, definitely just with this conversation and um, the work that you're doing. So I wish you Thank the you. best, you know, and what you're doing and what you continue to do. And uh, as a guest of Maya Tech Life, you always have an open invite. So hopefully when, you know, maybe three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, when this really just takes off and just, you know, into another level, you are always more than welcome to come back to share any updates and of the work that you're doing. So thank you again for being here with us this evening. And to all our audience members, those of you that were here joining us live, I know we had a couple of people that joined us live, or those of you that are catching this on the replay, please make 
make sure you go and visit our website at myedtech.life, myedtech.life, where you can check out this amazing episode and the other 255 wonderful episodes where you can find some amazing stories from founders, co-founders, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, all types of educators also as well. And I promise you that you're definitely going to find something or you're going to find some knowledge nuggets that you can definitely sprinkle onto what you are already doing great. So please make sure you visit our website. And if you haven't done so yet, please make sure that you follow us on all socials at my ed tech life. Just type that in on all socials and we'll definitely be there. Give us a like, give us a share, give us a follow. And please don't forget about our mission to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Please make sure you visit our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We would definitely appreciate it as we are getting closer to our mission of getting to those 1,000 subscribers. So thank you guys, as always, for all of your support. You know what we, we know that, you, excuse me, you know that you, we do this for you because we want to bring you some amazing conversations, amazing stories, amazing educators, amazing people that are doing some amazing things in the education space to continue to help us grow professionally, personally, and just to continue to help us get our, I guess, tools sharpened and always be at the ready. So thank you all for your support. And my friends, don't forget, until next time, stay techie.